and welcome to The Entrepreneurial Musician, a coaching service podcast and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. This is TEM 235 titled, Is Your Networking Proactive? Thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the host of TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hitz Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So I've got a book coming out in the fall. I'm doing this Seth Godin Akimbo workshop called Writing in Community, and today is actually day 100 of me posting small parts of this book daily to my cohort. And because I have to share this with people in real time, at least by my standards, it's good. It's like my best work because I'm, I'm having to be thoughtful about it. And I'm having to carve out time during the day when I'm at my best in terms of thinking and writing. I'm, I'm really happy with how things are coming out so far. The title is still to be determined, but it will be released by mid fall and i'll obviously announce the pre-sale here on the podcast as well as on tem.fm and on the tem youtube channel so stay tuned so i thought i would start this episode with a book excerpt this is titled is your networking proactive when i first start working with a new tem coaching client i ask them to come up with a list of three skills which if improved would most move them closer to achieving their goals one thing that makes almost everyone's list is networking. Just about every client I've had who felt the need to improve their networking shared one thing in common. They weren't proactive enough about it. You can't let something as important to your success as networking simply come to you. You need to be intentional about your strategy and its execution. One simple exercise many of my clients have completed with great success is reaching out to 10 people every month. You can reach out to anyone who has any overlap with the various aspects of your portfolio career. If you do this for six months, you will reach out to 60 people. Even if only 10% of them get back to you and start some kind of conversation, that's six people you already deemed worth knowing who would not have been in your orbit otherwise. You can also reach out to 10 people every week if you want to accelerate things, although I find that spacing it out can be more beneficial for a variety of reasons. As with everything, you should find your own ideal schedule for this exercise. But the most important part is sticking to whatever schedule you establish. You should treat each batch of 10 like a hard deadline. You'll get out of this exercise what you put into it. If you put a lot of time into coming up with your list of 10 people and take the time to truly craft individualized and relevant messages to each person, you will get significantly better results. And as with anything, you will get better at it as you move forward. So that's the excerpt from this upcoming TEM book of mine called Is Your Networking Proactive? And at least that section was called Is Your Networking Proactive? I've, I've got a couple of ideas for the title. And since I'm still in the process of making the book, I'm, it might go in a couple of different directions. But I will fill you all in on the details as soon as I know them. And lastly, uh, just some quick thoughts on a trap that I can fall into from time to time. I recently read a quote from James Clear about hard work, and it was something I need to be reminded of from time to time. Here is his quote. Hard work is not always something you can see. It is not always physical effort. In fact, the most powerful form of work is thinking clearly. Designing a winning strategy may not look very active, but make no mistake, it is very hard work. Strategy often beats sweat. Strategy often beats sweat. That is what jumped out at me. The trap that I can fall into is tricking myself into thinking I'm being really productive simply because I'm working really hard. It is almost always easy for me to spot when I am being lazy or just not working hard or enough, it is much harder for me to not when I am working hard, but on the wrong things. Sometimes I'm working on the wrong things because I'm just disorganized and haven't taken the time to get my priorities in focus. But sometimes I work hard on the wrong stuff to avoid hard or uncomfortable work. Neither one of these scenarios is very productive and long term, they're a surefire to burnout because lots of effort for minimal results uh, tends to be what I 
get the most frustrated about. And in a future TEM episode, I will talk about the benefits of having regularly scheduled strategic meetings with yourself or with anyone you are partnering with. This is a great way to keep you honest with yourself about exactly what should be happening next. And I can say from personal experience, anytime I carve out time to really dig into whether I'm on exactly the right path, I am always happy I did. But putting the time in to figure out exactly what strategy I need to be executing will catch me from either not working enough, but it will also catch me doing the harder, the more insidious thing of working hard, but on the wrong thing. So thank you to James Clear for that reminder. And then I've been doing a weekly quote, which I've been enjoying. And uh, this one is from a bass player by the name of Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Quote, a band needs to be more good at playing music. It needs to tap a source to awaken a feeling that lies dormant in the people, a freedom and beauty that is normally eclipsed by the shadows of everyday life, a feeling we didn't even know we had. I guess that's a little bit long for a tattoo. Otherwise, I'd think about getting that tattooed on my body somewhere. That's awesome. He completely nails it. This is exactly what a band needs to do, as he says. This is what teaching needs to do. This is what business coaching needs to do. This is what a new practicing app that a developer makes needs to do. This is what a film score needs to do. Uh, I'm always talking about being remarkable and asking the harsh question, if you stop making your art tomorrow, would anyone miss it? If you tap into a source and awake a feeling that lies dormant in people and lets them feel a freedom and beauty that their everyday existence usually drowns out, your art will be missed desperately by those people. Like they'd shout from the rooftops if it went away. So tap into what Flea is putting down here and the remarkable box will be indelibly checked for you and your art moving forward. And at that point, the business side of things is a breeze. It really is. Thank you to everyone for listening, subscribing, leaving a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get TEM. And simply for your attention, the most valuable commodity that any of us have to give. TEM is produced by Will Houchin and is a part of the Pedal Note Media Podcast Network. The theme music for TEM is played by Ben Barron, Rich Kelly, Daniel LaPell, and myself, Andrew Hitz. For show notes, the TEM blog, and to learn more about TEM coaching, please visit tem.fm. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, that is going to do it for another episode of The Entrepreneurial Musician.